Gia Gov a Carja, August Banach T. La Le Padrig. That's Irish for Hello, friends, and Happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to the Uncommon Virtual St. Patrick's Day concert. My name is Ronan Holland. I am president of Uncommon, the Irish Association of Nova Scotia. I am proud to say that this year marks the 30th anniversary of the founding of our association. Uncommon promotes Irish language and culture in Nova Scotia. This year, because of the pandemic, we are not able to gather for our annual St. Patrick's Cayley. So we decided to do the next best thing and bring the Cayley to you online. Over the next hour or so, you will see a few familiar faces from Halifax's Irish community and from Uncommon. We have an exciting lineup of talented performers of Irish music, dance and storytelling. I'm sure you will like it. You have just heard an intro from the musicians of our house band. Sean Feeney plays guitar and banjo. He hails from Spittle in Galway and works in Halifax. Tatsu Oki plays the fiddle and the bowron. He is from Toronto and studied ethnomusicology at Memorial University in St. John's before coming to Halifax. You will be hearing more from the house band during the evening. And now for our first dance act of the evening. This is the Diaga da Irish Dance School from Halifax. Diaga was founded by world medalist and river dance cast member Zef Cassie. We are delighted to welcome the Diaga dancers once again to our St. Patrick's Day Cayley. This evening, Chloe, Kylie and Addison will dance the three-hand reel they performed at the recent Celtic festival, while Haley will follow with a hornpipe. Accompanying the dancers on fiddle is Megan McNeil. We are very happy to spread some St. Patrick's Day cheer. While it is not quite the same as catching up over dinner or on the dance floor at a proper Cayley, I'm sure you won't mind our dropping in and selling, celebrating St. Patrick's Day with you virtually. And all going well, we'll meet you together again in person next year. Now, enjoy this lovely number from Diaga Irish Dance.
Now I have the pleasure of introducing you to Orla McCaig. Orla is from County Monaghan and is the Ireland Canada University Foundation Irish Language Instructor at St. Mary's University, Halifax. She sits on the board of Uncommon. She is a fluent Irish speaker and a musician. Orla now sings a beautiful song in Irish accompanied by Sean and Tatsu from our house band. Gee is Misha Orla. Myself, Sean and Tatsu are going to do a song now called Fui Shiva Yotza. It's based on a poem written by Marcin O'Giron and put to music by Zoe Conway and John McIntyre. We're going to follow that with a reel called The Limerick Glasses. Banagi Tatnavas.
We are delighted to now present some beautiful harp music from harpist Ellen Gibling. Ellen holds a degree in music from McGill University and an MA in Irish traditional music performance from the University of Limerick, Ireland. She performs and teaches harp here in Halifax. She will be playing two jigs of her own composition. If you like harp music, you must listen in. Now we have a special reading from my namesake, Ronan O'Driscoll. Ronan is from County Kerry and has lived in the United States and Japan before settling down with his family here in Halifax. He is a published author and educator. This evening he will be reading from his upcoming book, Chief O'Neill, which is about the life of Francis O'Neill, a Chicago police chief who is said to have saved Irish music. Ronan is obviously passionate about his subject matter, as you will undoubtedly notice from his reading this piece. Hello. That was the opening of Chief O'Neill's favourite. My name is Ronan O'Driscoll, 
and I'm not good enough to play much for you, so instead I'd like to tell you about the man who loved that tune and many more like it. Francis O'Neill, born in 1848, died in 1936. His books of Irish music are famous worldwide, yet his amazing life story is not as well known. At 16, he left County Cork by ship to travel the world, his wooden flute always in his bag. As a sailor, he survived shipwreck and near starvation on a remote tropical island. There is so much of his fascinating story to tell, I had to put it into a novel. The book is called Chief O'Neill and will be published by Somerville Press in May. For full details, you can check out the website uh, chiefoneill.com. Uh, many thanks to Uncommon for the opportunity to read an excerpt for you today. Uh, what I'd like to read is after Francis has circumnavigated the globe, having many adventures, and has met Anna Rogers, who was originally from County Clare. Together, they decide to marry and settle in Chicago. Their timing was unlucky, as they joined many immigrants looking for work just as the city was visited by catastrophe, the Great Fire of 1871. Francis and Anna survived this terrible time, but not without their share of hardship. Of their ten children, only four survived to see their father rise to chief of police and become famous for gathering and preserving thousands of Irish tunes. Okay, so I'd like to read uh, from chapter five. Chapter five, The Tongs by the Fire. Chicago, Illinois, October 10th, 1871. How are you doing, Anne? Francis called her Anne now, but thought of her as Anna. She did the same with Frank and Francis. Anna groaned as she navigated from the tiny bedroom of their tenement flat. Take your time, he said. Sit down there by the table. Francis fussed over her as she sat down, brushing him off. Oh, he's been rolling inside of me all day, she chuckled. No, no, we don't know it's a boy, Francis insisted. He kicks around enough that I think it's a he. Could be she takes after her mother. Another dancer from Fecal, he said with a grin. Only another month till November. Then we'll know. Oh, she squirmed with discomfort instead of saying more. He frowned and went to their ancient black stove, worrying about how pale she was. A cup of tea might help? She shook her head. No, too soon before mass. I've already changed and ready to go. I'm sure, sure nobody'd mind if you skipped it. So close to... She gave him a look. He slugged back his tea. Well then, let's be off. The autumn afternoon was dry and windy. They took their time getting to St. Pat's. Francis was glad of the late Sunday service. Priests in Ireland were never so accommodating. Anna had been up half the night and would never have been able for it first thing. He took a side glance at her from their hard pew. His wife? The idea still surprised him almost a year later. He recalled the rickety wooden frame Methodist church in Bloomington. How oh, his father would have hated that, even though it had been the only option for their ceremony. To think he had despaired she would never look at him again, right after Bridie Reed had conned him out of his money. After several rough months working as a navvy with his brother on the canals in Pennsylvania, he'd headed west. He didn't care if she had someone or not. But why had he been so stiff and awkward when they finally met? By then he had a job as a district school teacher in a town near where she worked. He hated it. Give him South Sea pirates and hurricanes any day over a classroom full of boys. And he had thought he had always wanted to be a teacher. Finally, at the Knox County barn dance, screeching fiddles and people stomping around them, he muttered to her over the noise and crowd, Um, Anna, would you, maybe you'd like to, yes, Francis, go along with me? She laughed her lively laugh. Come over here. He was so surprised, she had to drag him out onto the dance floor. Dominus vobiscum intoned the priest, his back to them. The murmured words died in the dim of the church. Francis started from his reverie, getting a dark look from Anna as the crowd muttered the response. He joined in hastily. 
Jesus, Mary and Joseph, what's that? she asked, pointing to the evening sky. Drapes of red hung between nearby buildings. There was a strange bitter smell on the wind. Can't be the sunset, Francis said. It's to the north of us. The other parishioners stared about, some curious, some alarmed. Maybe we should head home, said Francis. She ignored him, furrowing her brow at the spectacle. Let's go see what it is. Go up the river. A crowd of people headed along the street northwards. Francis looked ahead to see Anna purposely following them. Anne, go easy now, he called, racing to catch up to her. Red rain fell all through the night. Prairie winds whipped the flames across the city, settling equally on humble shack and stately building. In no time at all, offices, banks, theatres, even the great courthouse, were devoured by an insatiable beast determined to return the city to the plains. Gusts of hot wind blew blazing houses onto other houses. People yelled and ran through the infernal heat and light, stomping on large rats appearing from under the wooden sidewalks. Firemen, trying to face the blaze, found the water blown back in their faces. People went to the one re refuge they could rely on. With escape to the north and the west cut off, they turned to the lake shore and the sands, the former slum recently cleared by the mayor. Looking westward, the night sky was lit, spectral yellow, bright as midday. Francis watched a woman cry out in despair. She wore two fur coats and dripped with jewellery. Waist high in water, she screamed at her husband. He ignored her, wading further out to escape the heat buffeting them. The howl of the fire-driven wind drowned their screams. Should we go into the water? Francis yelled to Anna. No, there's shelter behind those rocks. Her face was closed, lips pursed tight. What was she thinking? Afraid of the answer, he asked anyway. Is the baby all right? How do you feel? She made no reply. He crouched next to Anna, sitting on their battered suitcase. He held her as the city burned down before them. Thank you very much.
introduce you to Dusty Kelleher. Dusty is a board member of Uncommon and is passionate about Irish language and music. He is a songwriter and storyteller and can be seen leading the Halifax Ghost Walk. He plays guitar and sometimes sings unaccompanied. His last album, which is available on his website, is The Way to Grace. Here is Dusty with the traditional Irish tune, The Galway Shawl. She was fair and handsome And her beauty nearly took my breath away And she wore no jewels No costly diamonds No pain, no power ribbons on it and around her shoulder she wore the Galway shawl well she kept on walking she kept on talking till her father's cottage came into view Sat me down beside the fire, and I could see her father, if he was six feet tall, and soon her own mother had a kettle singing. All I could think of was. The Galway shawl, and she wore no jewels, no costly diamond, no pain, no powder, no none at all, and she wore a bonnet with the red ribbons on it. Shoulder, she wore a Galway shawl. The blackbird and the stack of barley, Rodney's glory, and that old foggy do. She sang each note like the Irish linnet, and her tears they pulled on her cheeks like the morning dew and it was early, early all in the morning I had to hit the road for Donnie gone she's a 
her goodbye, sir. Cried when she kissed me. My heart remains with the Galway shawl. And she bore no jewel. second dance segment of the evening and it is a special one at that. This is called Shannos step dancing. Shannos is the oldest form of Irish step dance. Known for its relaxed playful style, Shannos step is improvised and is referred to as the jazz of Irish dance. This piece features oncoming board member Elizabeth MacDonald and Lisa O'Driscoll. They will be accompanied by Orla McCaig on fiddle. If you like Irish dance, this piece is a real treat. Next up, you will hear Glenn Coolen. Glenn is a longtime friend of Uncommon and founder of the Rejigged Festival. Glenn is an accomplished musician and composer who plays a variety of traditional Irish instruments. In the next piece, you will hear Glenn playing the traditional flute, accompanied by Daryl Stewart on guitar.
Well, that was a fine performance from our own Glenn Coolan on flute, accompanied by Daryl Stewart on guitar. And a lovely evening of music, storytelling and dance it was from our performers at this virtual St. Patrick's Day Cayley. On St. Patrick's Day, it's all about having fun, whether you are Irish, of Irish heritage or just Irish for the day. On Common, the Irish Association of Nova Scotia has been delighted to present this virtual Cayley, showcasing some of the best of Irish culture in Nova Scotia. I want to thank all of the performers, the people behind the scenes, and the members of Uncommon for making the Cayley a, a success. Special thanks to Orla, Elizabeth and Dusty, who not only performed, but also helped organise the event. If you liked the Cayley, please subscribe to Uncommon's YouTube channel and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Please stay tuned for further events throughout the year. We always welcome new members and you can join Uncommon by visiting our website oncommon.org. We will now have a final set of music from our house band with Sean on banjo and Tatsu on the bowron. We look forward to seeing you in person at our Cayley next year. Slán August Bannacht.